of your ceaseless labors in the interest of universal science and invention. Your diploma, Colonel Stupnagel. And your diploma, Mr. Bird. A little to the left, Colonel. A little to the right, please. please Hold Bird. it. Hold it, Professor. Thank you. Pardon me for asking, but uh, <laughs> uh, just uh, what did you invent? <laughs> You come along with us, Professor, and we'll show you the cream of our invention. Surely, it's right this way, it's a pleasure. Pleasure. Uh, This is our new patented inverted bureau with the legs sticking up and the flat part down. So on account of when you drop your collar button, it can't roll underneath. You can also use the legs for bookends. This is the little model we made it from. Now, gentlemen, if you'll come across here with me, I'll show you something else right over here. Uh, this is our inverted lighthouse for submarine. Inverted lighthouse? Yes, you see, when the lighthouse is up this way, it's for boats that go right along the top of the ocean. And when you dunk it like that, it's for submarines and divers. And water witches. <laughs> and then down here, we also have a new kind of a patented bell that when you press the button, it rings ten minutes ago. That's right, Colonel. What is this? Uh, This is our old-fashioned modern icebox. Miss Hogan, would you model this invention for us, please? And that's an old-fashioned piece of ice made electrically. Uh, Many housewives can't get used to not worrying about the piece of ice uh, becoming smaller and smaller. That's right, Colonel. Pardon. Now watch this. Good morning, darling. Our electrical ice man. Now, you gentlemen know how men carry combs in their pockets you know, on account of they lie flat. Now, but they can never carry hairbrushes. No? No. But I have here my new patented hairbrush, you see? Yeah, but what good is a hairbrush like that? Uh, we thought you'd ask us that question. Tell them, Colonel. <laughs> well, you see, in my left-hand pocket, I carry a live spider, you see? Mm-hmm. I like this. Huh? And I show the live spider to the hairbrush, and when he sees it, the hair stands on end. I think we'd better be going. We'll trouble him for our hats. This way, gentlemen. <laughs> you see, gentlemen, instead of having a regular hat rack, we have our own patented hat hanger-upper. When 
when we find a way to get the brims off with the hats, that'll be a swell invention. Calling Colonel Stupnagel and Bud. The uh, television phone, Colonel. Calling Colonel Stupnagel and Bud. Okay, Colonel. Hello, this is the Colonel speaking. Oh, hello, Colonel. I wonder if you and Professor Bud would be interested in coming up to the Mayfair School for Girls this afternoon and deliver one of your famous scientific lectures. Yes, yes, we'd be delighted to go. Yes, we'd be delighted to, Miss Brown. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Bye. Oh, yes, he'll be here. Wait a minute. Hey, wait a minute, will you, will you? I want to ask her another question. Ah, how do you do, Miss Brown? Oh, here you are. Uh, may I present our school board, who's made a special trip just to come down here and hear your famous lecture. Miss Chiselbottom, Mr. Fiddlestaffer, Mr. Terwilliger, Colonel Stupnagel, and Professor Budd. You know, Miss Chiselbottom is the daughter of the Confederacy. That's too bad. Soon we'll have her a daughter of Stupnocracy. Right. Well, really? Well, uh, uh, well, don't you think we'd better go to the lecture hall? Well, Why not? Well, Why, uh, it's an insult. Well, no, no, no. You can't talk to me that way. Oh, you know what right. oh, okay, let me go here. Oh, girl, I'd like to introduce to you today our guest speakers who stand alone in scientific research and philosophical endeavors. That's it? You want a lecture, Colonel, a lecture. Oh, <laughs> sure, I'll give that. You girls are very naughty. No, 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 not that kind of a lecture, a scientific lecture. You oh, know. all right. All right, but before we start the lecture, uh, I'm going to conduct an intelligence test to find out your mental age. That's right, that's right. Girls will have to ask you just a few questions. Yes, the first question is, how would you girls get a giraffe nine feet high through a tunnel six feet in diameter going north and south through a mountain? I know the answer. You back the giraffe into the south end of the tunnel, and just as the giraffe is about to walk through, you turn the tunnel around, and the giraffe finds himself on the north end, and there he is. No, guess again. You could take the tunnel up and put it over the giraffe's head. No, guess again. We give up. Would you tell him, Colonel? Yes, we take the giraffe to a party and we introduce him to a very lovely lady giraffe whom we'll call Miss X. And then they go on through the party and they have a very lovely time and finally he takes her out for a long stroll in the cool of the evening. And after they become very well acquainted, uh, we tell him that she has long been very happily married and this embarrasses him so much that he finally hangs his head and walks easily through the tunnel. <laughs> better proceed with the lecture. What would you like us to lecture on? Well, uh, I think something about bird life is very appropriate. No, tell them about the Bulgarian upquirp. The up what? Upquirp. It's a bird that walks up and down trees. That is a woodpecker. I know, but this uh, up, up and down trees at the same time. Otherwise, he'd be a woodpecker, and he doesn't want to be a woodpecker. How can a bird walk up a tree and down a tree at the same time? One of his feet face north, and the other one south. Oh, I see. Do you shoot this bird? No, you can't shoot him. You see, the bullets go right through him. He's all holes in the first place. He's been shot at so many times, you mean. No, no, he's born that way. That's so the bullets will go through him without touching him. The only way to snare an upquirp is to sneak up behind him with an upquirp call. It's sort of like a moose horn. In fact, I won the prize last year for being the dandiest upquirp caller. It goes like this. Oh, me, oh, me, oh, me, oh, my. And then when he hears that call, he stops dead in his tracks, and you sneak up behind him with an upquirp fork. Uh, that's a spoke fork for catching upquirps. And there's another very thing about upquirps, they sing. Did you ever hear of a bird doing that? Yes! No, that's the wrong answer. You see, this bird sings one song flying frontward and one song flying backward. When he flies forward, he says, baza, baza, baza. And when he flies backwards, he says, hazab, 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 which is baza spelled backward, H-A-Z-A-B. And so the hunters can always catch them because they know what direction they're flying in on account of the... But the government sent us down to conserve the uh, upquirps. We train them. We're governmental upquirp trainers. Yes, and then we take the young upquirps and we train them, instead of saying Hazab and Bazaar, to say Quark, 
K-W-A-W-K, which is spelled the same forward or backward, and then the hunters can't tell which direction the upquirps are flying in, and they get away. But the hunters? No, the upquirps. Is that all about the upquirps? Yes, I guess so. Why? Oh, I'm just wondering what color they are. I don't know. I've never seen an upquirp myself. <laughs> I think we'd better have some tea. You know, the girls arranged it. I think it'd do us both good. <laughs> I suppose you serving the anchovies straight. They should always be served curled up on the cracker. <laughs> but it seems to me I remember inventing a, an anchovy curler at one time. I think you did, Colonel, but I don't think you finished it. Yeah, every time I started to make it, you ate up uh, all the anchovies. <laughs> That's right, until you crossed the anchovies with burglar alarm systems and then gave me ringing in the ears. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't there something we can do about it? Well, sure, the first thing to do is to put on running pants. On the anchovy? No, on you. Something nice and neat for a hundred-yard dash. I get you. Right. Now, uh, can we go to the kitchen? Why, certainly. Right this way. The kitchen. Thank you. That's a good idea. And bring the anchovies. Well. Now put that right there. Well, here I am. That's it. Now start running around the table. Around the table? Never cross the colonel when he's inventing. No. That's right. Now pass. Faster. Faster. You see, uh, this invention is based on the suspicious nature of the anchovy. As the runner runs around the table, the anchovies follow her with their eyes. Faster. Faster. In their desire to find out what's going on, the anchovies twist themselves into a complete circle. Now, Bud, you slip the crackers underneath the anchovies while they're still dizzy and before they have a chance to uncoil. Colonel, the anchovies are all curled. Good. Try that on your jelly roll. I demand this nonsense cease while the whole school is becoming demoralized. Well, thank you very much, Miss Brown. We've had a marvelous time. Come on, bud. <laughs> so long, Toots. How dare you! Really, girls, we'd like to stay, but we can't. We have several important things to do. Oh. I'll, tell you, I'll tell you, girls, as long as we can't stay, we'll build you a Stupenstein. A Stupenstein? Yeah, a Stupenstein. That's the second cousin to a Frankenstein. He'll do the same things we do and will be controlled from our own laboratory by our private double zero wavelength. But will that take a long time? Well, I'll tell you, with your help, we can do it this afternoon, but you'll have to work very hard. We need a lot of things. Oh, yeah. we'll do anything you say. Just name it. We'll get everything. Oh, that's... You'll well, bet. now let me see. The first thing we'll need will be a set of false teeth. Oh, that's easy. My Aunt Mrs. Stuyvesant plush duster has a swell set. I'll change and get them. Now, girls, how do you want this Stupenstein dress? Oh, I just love sailors. Well, you run out then and get a nice admiral's uniform. I'm off. Say, we can't use the Admiral's pants. Why not? No pockets in them. We'll have to get a pair of striped ones. Say, I'll get the striped pants. What can I get? A nice toupee should be easy. One toupee coming up. Come on, Doris. Fine. Yeah, and then we need some uh, large nuts and bolts and some small ones and a compact automobile engine and a riveting machine. All right. All right. Say, and some bailing wire, a couple of hunks of tin, and a pair of shoes. We'll get that.
yard. I'm going there now. If you wish, I can give you the lift. Oh, thank you so much. Come back with my coat. Come back with my coat, I said. Come back with my coat. He's down now. I got the key. Oh, that's fine. Too bad you didn't have any lowers. <laughs> now I need a blowtorch. Blowtorch? Yeah. Go down to the Statue of Liberty and get that one. It's burning a long time. It'll probably be hot by now. Okay. Torch on its way. Here comes the bell. Get him. Simon. But you must do something immediately. Yes, I'll see what we can do. All right. Well, we're all ready, girls. Yeah, go bring those doubting Thomases in. Oh. Yes, get out of the way. Bud, you go and crank them, will you, please? Oh, sure. Yeah, I christened the stupid sign. Thought he had me there. That's all right. All I did was fall against this rope here. 